When you get in here, you have to you have to do this to check out if the honey's good. If you didn't have breakfast, you might check it out twice. This hive is actually honey locked. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the vlog. Excuse me, 321. Um, I think this is uh, the third vlog of this trip. Um, I'm going to combine today and tomorrow into this vlog because there's not much going on today. Um, I just woke up, and what I'm doing right here is yes, I'm doing the videos. Uh, comments so the comments the juniors video came out today that um food review we did in um hernando around the corner from our house uh answering comments um trying to wake up got my coffee and there's a surprise at this house i left this in mike's truck last time i was here probably like a month ago so this, this is my coffee cup i really needed this travel mug because tasha accidentally took my silver one um, with her in, um, in her SUV when she left last night. Um, speaking of last night, I, um, I could not sleep much, so I went ahead and edited a video, uh, with Taste This One with Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, that video should be out on the 29th of July. So when you're seeing this video... It came out, I think, a day or two before this one. So please check that one out. Um, and if you don't know who Jason is with Taste This One, uh, check that video out and click the link. Um, I put a card up at 419 into the video. And I put a, uh, a link in the descriptions as well. Um, I made sure to do a video with him. Um, he wasn't really going to do a video, but... I said, man, you drove five and a half hours one way to come here to set up for two hours tomorrow, you know, when he helped set up for the Celebration of Life. And then he left because his daughter had a softball game that night at 6 p.m. So, like, man, an 11-hour drive, um, and you spent money uh, to stay at a hotel room uh, the night before. So um, the least I could do was get you in the video to try to get some subscribers. So please, please, please pay him a visit. Um, subscribe to his channel if you like his channel um, and help him out with the, subscri with the subscribers because for him to do all that, that's the least you can do, you know, just to show your support to this channel because um, he really shows his support and means a lot that he did that uh, for my daughter. So, um, with that said, um, I'm about to go pick blackberries once I finish up the comments uh, at the pond since uh, Mike is at the uh, funeral with his family today. Um, so, uh, please keep them in your prayers and uh, we will uh, see Mike the next day. So, today, you're going to see blackberries in, in, in a little bit. So, let me get, brush my teeth, drink my coffee, drink some more coffee answer comments drink some coffee and i will see you at the pond go post stop recording i'm in line at mcdonald's and like five people's already left the other drive through that's adjacent to this one this lady just started ordering um all i heard was the first order so i already know something's just weird with these people they said they want a sausage egg mcgriddle with cheese but hold the cheese and sausage. Lady, it's just a McGriddle with an egg. But I did notice while I was sitting here, they have nuts 
as big as mine. Look at that. Look at them nuts. They're nuts as big as mine. And I'm not lying about that. Will you be using the mobile today? Um, yes, SW11. Okay, what was the code? Um, SW11. Okay, what was the code? Alright, we'll get that for you in a second. Alright, thank you. Okay, well, finally gonna get my coffee. I'm already woke. But, uh, yeah. I don't use the drive through through mu too much. I really don't go out to eat too much, but to do reviews. But when I'm on the road, um, after the third day, my coffee and my thermos is gone or really cold. And I, and I, um, and I drank cold coffee this morning. Um, there's no coffee cups in the house. I don't want to heat it up in a glass cup that's not a mason jar that will probably break, um, getting too hot in the microwave. Uh, so I'm just going to get me a coffee for $1.80, but I saw that I got some more points, so I got a free iced French vanilla latte smoothie wallapala, whatever you call them things. Latte, cappuccino, twist with a mocha chata, mocha chata dust, whatever. It was free. Uh, but when you do the app and you, you, you get free stuff, make sure to get the large because small medium large if it's free latte mocha dust with the twist of lemon it'll it'll, t it'll try to give you a small but you can get a large for free okay so you're welcome let me get this and i will see you at the pond go post stop recording Hey, change of plans. Uh, Mike just called me while I was in the drive-thru. Um, hopefully I got two more subscribers or, or, or they might spread the message inside McDonald's that each window got a, got a business card. Yes, I keep them readily handy right there. Um, and then the rest of them right there on the trip. And I got some more in the back of the vehicle. But uh, Mike called me and said, hey, they just picked them last night, so there'll be more uh, available this evening, afternoon, evening. So we'll pick blackberries this evening to make sure they're ripe. Um, I'll figure out something to do. I guess I can take this key back from the rec center, uh, to, well, to the rec center that um, I got the key to the kitchen for the pavilion for yesterday uh, at the Celebration of Life. So I will take the key back, um, find a few more things to do, and uh, I'll get back with you. Probably, I might grab something to eat because I haven't been to Hokkaido in a long time. I did a 13 pound, uh, I weighed some food up in, inside of Hokkaido um, and uh, it was like 13 pounds of, uh, of food. I'm not doing 13 pounds a day, I might do eight. Uh, I want to be comfortable picking blackberries later. So I go there, that's in Swansea, Illinois. Um, it's just like actually like five miles um, Five miles outside of Fairview or maybe you know what I think it's only a half a mile outside Fairview because Fairview BAM um, The road that we turn off from the rec center um, It should be about a couple blocks down the road from that uh, on the main drag. So Okay, all right. Well, let me get inside. I'm going to Dollar General to get some um some deals um, see if they got some deals here and then um, head on to to the rec center so see you in a little bit go post stop recording
Headed back uh, to the house now uh, that I'm staying at, and uh, probably gonna relax and watch a movie, and then probably six o'clock this evening or so, head on out to pick some blackberries. Right now, I'm not eating anything. I don't want anything to eat for quite a bit. If you saw, I wrapped it up with 10 of those cups of, I call them ca cafeteria ice creams, because when we went to school, they gave you those little bitty uh, ice creams, so. Okay, well, that was some really delicious food. I told the ladies in there, they already knew me because they didn't take any plate off the, the table. They know that my memory is bad and I, I try to count the plates. Um, started off with like 14. Table's only so big, folks. Um, but started with 14. I went and got a couple plates of dessert and 10 ice creams. Um, I think I did pretty good. She goes, long time no see. Like, I uh, moved, and um, I'm just back here to for a celebration of life for my daughter. And um, she wanted a, a new, another card because she saw it was different. I said, yes, I put the ladybug in there for my daughter to, uh, in memory of her. So, uh, really nice, uh, really nice people. I said, yeah, I, I moved a while back because uh, the house burned down, but I had to come eat some of this delicious food. It's really good, Hokkaido. Uh, this is in Swansea. It's like, it's right, right on the border of Fairview Heights and Swansea in Illinois, but really, really uh, delicious. So, okay, let me shut up and I'll see you at the house. Go post, stop recording. Okay, folks, so I'm with Mike. Uh, he's jealous of my chicken coop, so he's getting his chicken coop going on out here. I'm gonna pick blackberries later with a flashlight, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be down. To it. I'm gonna watch my language because I get to curse him more when I'm with Mike. <laughs> it's his fault. Uh, but we're gonna get some bees tomorrow, and I got the bees from him before. I told him I, I sleep better at night if I did some work. If I did some work to get some bees, but uh, we're, we got work to do. We can't talk much, but I'll talk to you when we get a break. Hey, we are at the um, farmhouse. Uh, there is there's baby ducks in here. Um, they go to a uh, a livestock auction um, every month. Um, what is in here? Oh, guineas. These are what everybody wants me to get. Look, I I'm not getting these guineas. They're too loud at home. You know, if you stay somewhere, you don't want these. They don't never shut up. They never, never shut up. So if you're out like a place like this, it's okay to have it because they can make all the noise they want. Um, here's some uh, bigger ducks and there's roosters in here, I think, too. There's some geese. Hey, buddy. Ooh, wobble around like me when I get old. Hey. There's roosters in here. Then they got hanging, hanging feed. Uh, I think there's some uh, rabbits around here somewhere, but there's some, um, there's some livestock over there. There's some cows. Uh, we're just trying to figure out a way to get this, uh, this other house. Let me show you real quick. Shut up. See, you hear them? Do you hear the guineas? Oh yeah, let me get guineas at my house. I asked people in comments, they said, you should get guineas to control the text. So like, do you own guineas? They said, no. I said, oh, okay. I won't take advice from people that don't even own the guineas. Um, yeah. 
but they said they take care of ticks. I said, uh, I think 80 chickens will take care of ticks. Here is this uh, this house he's gonna get from here. He's gonna try to put a, get a tractor and, and lift it up with the straps, but uh, probably put a new door on here. There's laying boxes on the other side. We gotta redo, he has to redo that. But you lift this up to get the, the eggs from here. There's laying boxes inside of each of those. Let me uh, let me go around and see these rabbits real quick, and then I'll and then I'll try to help him out. He's he's, he's got to get the tractor out of the, the barn. That's what I said. That's I guess that's a four four play talk for farmers. Got to get the tractor out the barn. Uh, what else is over here? There's more chickens in here. Hey buddies, there's more all the way over to there, so all the way there to there, trying to find the rabbits, hold your horses. Yeah, when I stay here, I stay at the, uh, the, the little trailer deal over there called the farmhouse. I like to stay out here, it's really, really peaceful. Here's the rabbits. Hey, thumpers. I was wanting to raise rabbits too. Um, you can sell them every three months. You can sell them. Oh, look at this, some more different kinds of chickens. All different kinds. These are specialty. Hey, buddies. Oh, this is not a chicken. Oh, this is how they make Cadbury bunny eggs. Oh, look at this. They got the silky hair like the ones that Tasha don't like, the wigs. Oh, look at this. Fancy. Yeah, you're fancy. Then we got some more down here, some little miniature chickens and some more little rabbits. So baby rabbits and chickens together. Okay, I'll show you the, oh, I'll show you the cow. Almost got caught up there. Here he comes. Here he comes with the tractor so I gotta hurry up and show you. Um, we built that whole house out of pallets, big, big pallets, and there's still more pallets back here. These are industrial, uh, like 14 foot pallets. We built that whole thing probably like 15 years ago. Here's a farm, farm uh, cats. They take care of the mice. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> then here's the hay. They got the, the hay bales all in there. Well, straw, don't, don't call it hay. Mike will tell you that straw. I should do that for you on camera and he'll, he'll correct me. Where'd this cow go? It was just freaking here. But there's like 10 cow out here somewhere. I just saw them when I came in. Oh, it must have ran away. Sorry guys, I was gonna show you a cow. Maybe before I go, if I see one, I will put, you, I will put it on camera for you. They used to have pigs back here. Let me see, uh, not me. They used to have pigs back here. I'll see where, uh, oh. Here you go. Here's a cow right here. Hey, you eating? Oh, we got some more. You eating? Dropping lumps over here. Okay, chocolate milk. I gotta say it, chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. Moo. Whoa. Okay, you don't like to be on camera? Moo. These aren't too old. They're not too old. They're not adult, adult cows there. Okay. Well, that's that. There's more cats and more cats. So the more cats you got, the less rats you got, in theory. Okay, let me go ahead and help uh, Mike. He saw some other stuff he's gonna be doing before we get to this. I think he's trying to find the chain, the chain to pick that up or the straps to pick that little chicken coop up. Okay, see you guys in a little bit. Go post stop recording.
Hey, found out quick that that was not going to work. I don't think the tractor was going to fit in that uh, that uh, hole. Real talk, not farmer foreplay talk. Okay, so uh, guess we're going to. He might have to build his own out there. So we'll we'll find out. I'm going to um, try to help him out before the sun goes down. As you see guys, the sun is going down over there. Um, he did get some of his chickens in here and there's some guineas in there. They're ugly as heck, right there. But let me um, let me go ahead and put these brackets on the corner of the, the, uh, the cage he has back here and uh, call it a night. It's getting too dark to, to uh, to do any kind of videos but we're going to put these chickens in there and then i'll be back out here tomorrow with the bee box and uh we're probably going to put some bees in there and then close it up at night time when the bees go um all in and have it secure for the ride home so we did get blackberries i'm going to put in the refrigerator uh today uh when i get home uh we'll get to there well, where i'm staying i'm going to put uh the blackberries in the refrigerator and then get those back out tomorrow night before I head back to Memphis. Um, probably end up freezing those on a uh, flat tray, a pizza tray, and then putting those um, in a bag so you can just take a scoop out um, whenever you want them. So let me get this done and uh, wish y'all uh, a good night, good day, whenever you're watching this, and uh, talk to you tomorrow. Go post, stop recording. Uh, Mike and I started the day off at good old days. This is in New Baden, Illinois. They really have some good food. Um, we started to walk in here and this place is usually very, very packed. So uh, I am glad today that we caught them on a uh, good time. We walked in. I was going to take pictures of the food for you, but they look so good. I forgot. This is the aftermath. I didn't realize till now to do that, and this shirt says it all. Okay, we made it out to the uh, pond. Uh, the pond you didn't see yet, uh, unless you saw some other videos, it was over there. Um, but here's the chickens. Um, nothing got in it last night. Uh, it is, that's what she said. That's what uh, <clears throat> they're looking like. They're liking the, the roomy, roomy atmosphere other than that little cage that's still in there we're gonna take out. Uh, about to feed them again. Uh, I was gonna get you some uh, footage of the uh, food, but I was really hungry this morning and I forgot. I'm sorry guys, I forgot. I had um, eggs over easy with a hash brown omelet, crispy bacon, pancakes, uh, coffee, and water. But I did show you the, the video, well, the picture of the empty plate that's about the best I could do. That's when I thought about it. And I, whoops, forgot to take a picture. Um, but what we're doing now here, I got my beehive I brought from Mississippi. Um, and we're going to get some bees in here today. Mike's over there getting some um, tools from uh, the storage units. Um, I'll probably get him on camera a little bit. Uh, I might go over there. I don't have a bee suit with me. He said I can get suited up. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and get some videos for you guys and I'm gonna brave a couple stings probably because uh, I think these might be more aggressive than the ones that, uh, that I had 
So we will, uh, we will see. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I might do a couple of cursions. Um, you never know. Uh, but I'll probably talk to him a little bit on camera. Um, but a lot, a lot of times, guys, on camera, I just don't get everybody that I'm with on camera much. Um, but once we do the bees, um, I know he's comfortable talking about bees, so I'll get him to, to talk a little bit about the bees probably. Um, other than that, I think the, the fence, we're going to uh, be pulling wire uh, fencing from there all the way down to there. And hopefully we can get all the way down, but uh, last time I was here, uh, before I, when I got the other bees, we pulled this fence. We pulled this fence all the way down to there, all the way down there. So, and I think we got, yeah, and we got over to the corner. So we went all the way down, all the way to that corner. So <clears throat> we're gonna get uh, get that done hopefully today and I might get out of here because I'm headed on home. So this will be the last vlog of this trip. I don't have anything planned on the way home, but just getting there. I might stop off my mom's, uh, get her a, a, a gift card from Walmart. Uh, her birthday's uh, coming up, so I would, I would do that. Uh, other than that, um, we're just gonna try to get some work done before it gets to be 100 degrees out here today. Uh, so it is like 9, 9 a.m. And I need to use the restroom already. I'm old, I'm, I'm freaking old. There's no bathroom out here for number two. Yes, there is. There's a cornfield, freaking whole cornfield out there. Okay, I'm here with Mike here. Um, I'm not sure if everybody knows who you are, but uh, if they don't, they ain't been watching the channel much. But this is Mike, uh, he's a good friend of mine. Um, uh, met him on construction um, at a job site, and I think freshly out of drinking, like fresh, very fresh. But uh, he had uh, faith in me, and uh, he's, he's done a lot for me. Uh, but I come out here, and they, they got the pond. It's real relaxing out here when you ain't working. But we're always working out here when we're out here. <laughs> but actually right now we're doing the bees. I trust him enough. He trusts me, so I trust him enough to, to drive five hours with bees in my in my car that he the uh he had uh buttoned up for me last time, so hey, let's do it again. A normal person wouldn't probably say that at all. But as you know, if you've been watching the channel I'm not too normal. Uh, but he's going to probably go over a couple things with bees that you might not know. And there's, a, there's some certain things I didn't know until, until he started talking about the bees, about 50 degrees. It's kind of like they don't come out unless it's 50 degrees and stuff like that. Like one bee, I forgot what it was. Was one bee is three teaspoons maybe his whole life? Or what is that? How much does a bee usually? Like about a teaspoon. About a teaspoon a lifespan. So if you're enjoying that honey, uh, each time you enjoy it, you probably just had enough for about four or five bees. So, and somebody just said, hey, is it just me? Is that a lot of work for that honey? And like, have you ever tried it before? I said, no. Like, well, then you, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Just like tomatoes, I call the tomatoes in the store red water balloons because that's all they are, just red and they're and like water. That's all it is, no flavor at all. Uh, but if you do have regular honey, uh, from your area, it is very much more delicious than regular store-bought honey. You probably wouldn't buy it again. Um, I've never bought honey after I've tried the honey that he had. Uh, I've never tried it from any other store. Um, and if you didn't know, if you're like a, a general about 20 mile radius around where you buy your local honey at, if you live there, get about a 20 mile radius because that's where the bees pollinate their, their uh, 
they get the pollen from the flowers from what usually people are allergic to so it helps out with your uh, your allergies okay what are we doing here now we're just going to tie the two boxes together for when you travel so when i hit the corners separate. going 40 <laughs> they won't um they, they won't, won't separate and have bees in the car Okay, we are placing the um, box. There you go. And uh, in theory, they won't come out now. But that'll keep it locked in place. Nothing to see here, just that. Okay, now we're getting the front end there, their, their entry door. Uh, we're going to cover that up because there's a feeder that usually goes there with the sugar and the water mixture. Um, and you want it ventilated a little bit so they can at least breathe so, and still not come out. So we'll staple this in there. And we're almost done. We'll get to the beehives out there. I'll show you the rest of it uh, when he's putting the bees in. I'll probably get stung a couple times. Like I said, I'm not going to put a suit on because I'm going to be brave for you guys. And if I get stung, uh, it's your fault. So, he did offer a bee suit, but I'm going to be hard-headed about it. It's too hot out here for that. I'd rather just get stung a couple times. I'm just saying that now. <laughs> I might rethink that. But he doesn't usually use any. He just laughs at me when I curse. So, I think he's used to people coming helping out and he gets a kick. He should, he should videotape people coming out helping him with the bees. That's what he should do. He can have his own channel. Okay, well, let's get out there and uh, it's heating up. I got to go. Okay, heading on over to the bees. I'm going to ride in this and he's driving the, the truck uh, with the bee box on the back. Well, there we go. All right, headed on. Wish me luck, guys. Um, I'm not the brightest light pole street light in the neighborhood. I've never been accused of being, never been accused of being uh, the brightest uh, person in the world, so. I think we're going over to the second beehive. There's one that has like four stacked up. Uh, after they get so many bees in it, you want to stack them up. Um, I think you leave the the uh, queen bee in the bottom one and put a metal cage in it because they're so big they can't get through the metal cage um, slots and the other bees can. That's the nuke. That's like a nuke. Uh, that's a starter box. But I never saw two starter boxes, like one on top of each other. He must be running out of boxes. He has about a hundred and something hives. Here's one here. I'll show you close up. Don't do this at home, folks. But that's, that's some bees right there congregating up top in the back. Oh, he's getting suited up. So maybe I shouldn't even... So he's taking some out of here because there's so many, they're all covered the front. And here's some over there. Let me get a close up real quick. There you go. Let me get out of here because they're already wondering what the heck this guy's doing with the camera. Let me get up out of here and uh, let him do a little work. I'll try to jump in with the camera. I want to get this cart away from here. Alrighty, a getaway car. See you guys shortly. Wish me luck. What the hell are they doing? So normally I would not recommend taking bees in the middle of the day, but because of the situation that we're in, you're here only for two days, so I didn't have time to go through a hive and get it ready. What we're gonna do is that yeah. hive right there has got a... Hold on one second. Okay. There you go. Okay. So that hive right there, I haven't put a second box on. And they're full. 
and at night they'll they'll be bearded out a lot worse than that because all the bees that are out working today will come back at night so the reason that we're going to do it during the day today is as long as i find the queen in there and then take several um, workers with it yeah we're going to take several uh frames of brood okay. and and bee pollen which is bee bread after they get it fermented as long as we take that and put it in the new hive that hive will be fine this hive what i'll do is i'll come in here tomorrow and i'll start making uh or not tomorrow, I'll give it two days. And then uh, I'll come in and take some eggs out of this hive and make queens, put them back in this hive, they'll make a queen out of it. I got cups that they sit in and they'll know to make queens out of those. And then I'll leave one of them in here. And then I'll take some other hives that I've got that I've been wanting to break down and I'll split them up with the, the extra queens that I make. So that's the only reason we're doing this is we're gonna leave this box here and all the bees that are out in the field and everything in a couple of frames we're gonna leave in here. They'll come back in at night. So it'll take them anywhere from 24 to 36 hours to figure out they are queenless. Once they figure out they're queenless, we'll take eggs from another hive, put them in the queen cell makers that we have and insert them into that hive and then they will make queens out of those okay and then and that's the only reason we we're taking this during the day but, i'm talking i'm gonna talk a little bit go ahead but no, normally what you do is uh do this and let them sit overnight so they go back inside or what would you normally do yeah normally do it ahead of time and then wait until after dark and if it's not overly hot, like this hive, the bees will never all go back in unless it's rainy. Okay. But uh, we come in the next day on a normal one because you have broken them down and there won't be as many bees, so they won't be sticking out. But it's July and it's hot, right. so they're always gonna be bearded out. And if you guys can see the yellow on the legs right here, the, the pouches, that, that's pollen that they're bringing back in. I'm not sure if you can see real good. That one went back, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not the brightest camper in the campsite here, but I'm just trying to do this for you guys. Like I said, it's your fault. But uh, let's get this done without trying to get stung as least as possible. But he's putting this uh, burlap sack. He's burning it because it's burned slow and puts it in the smoke uh, smoker so you can hit them a little bit to calm them down. You don't want to burn the he heck out of them, but just like uh, they go into what, defense mode? Yeah, they, uh, they're... they're defense mode is they think that the woods around them is on fire when they have the smoke so they gorge themselves with uh honey and okay. stuff that they're going to take to if they get burned out they'll take to another place so what they'll do is uh they gorge themselves real quick and they get fat and, and they don't uh, move as quickly so they calm down a little bit okay there. all right well let's do this and um i'll be back with you Okay. Well, you need help with anything? Okay, Let well, me know. What I'm going to try to do is if I can find that queen, right, then I'll want you to video her on there as I put her, you know, and then we'll put her in. Okay. Right. So. <clears throat> I don't know my phone is shoot a better video. Should have been had a second box on her a long time ago, but I didn't have time. That's why it's the way it is. Which actually worked out pretty good for this since we're going to leave a bunch of them and start another hive.
coming. Go ahead. Bigger than the rest, but I don't think it's it. It's not not that big. That's a drone. Okay. Okay. This one here. And oh, and if I forget, guys, drones do not have stingers. Their drones do not have stingers, and the rest of the bees do. Yeah, only males in the hive are the drones. Everything else is female. Okay. So all. All of these that you see. Except for the really oversized. All of them females, but the dr the drones that are males. And they're just used to. So the females are the mean ones because they have stingers. <laughs> Don't and the males are not the ones that are going to hurt you. But when you get in here, you have to you have to do this to check out if the honey's good. If you didn't have breakfast, you might check it out twice. This hive is actually honey locked. What's that mean? That means it's got so much honey in it that they can't really lay eggs in here because most of the spots are taken up. But this side, that right there is all uh, brood. Okay. And then. And that's honey there? That's honey around the outside. Honey there and that's brood. And, okay. and then you'll see there's larvae in there. They haven't capped that yet. And they call that brood is the larva. Right. Okay. And then and that's this cap. side. That's cap larva. Right. And this side here is honey. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Let me check to make sure he's right. <laughs> yes, that's honey. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're just going to take a quick look, make sure the queen's not on this frame. Because we want to try to find her. And the queens don't just fly away, right? They, they will they, fly once in a while, but most of the time they'll stay on their frame and they'll run in the hive. So sometimes you can't find them because they'll be running from one frame to the other. But when it's warm like this, it's nice because you can get in here and they're not, they're not too crazy about running. And this is an old mark on here. We used to, if you had a, if we were working off of uh, off of queen cells, we'd mark the one that had the queen cell on it. That's an old mark. And I'm trying to stay away. It would be a better shot to get in front of the hive, but I think he told me before that it's not a good thing to do to stand in front of a No, the because they block up behind you because they're always trying to go back and forth. Okay. So let me see if we got a queen on here. This is brood, and there's some bee bread mixed in with it, which is pollen. And they put it's it in food. there and it gets fermented. Okay. And that's what they use to feed the young bees. They make royal jelly out of that. Royal jelly. And the difference between a queen and a normal size bee is the amount of uh, royal jelly that, they, that the bees feed them. Okay, I don't find a queen on this one either. <clears throat> if you, can you come over my shoulder? Okay, if you look down in that middle section, point to it. Right here? Right. Now look down in there. You see that? See Looks that? like there's white stuff in there. Can you see them? I don't think I can see it or not. Let me go all the way around. Okay. If you can see oh. it, hopefully you can. If you can't, what is that? That That is royal jelly and there's eggs in there. So they're feeding those eggs. And uh, that's one of the ways you check to see whether or not you add, have to add pollen patties to your to your hives is if, if that's dry in there instead of having that uh, royal jelly in there, then you need to add. Add sugar water? No, you, you add pollen patties. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's what they make the bee bread out of. So in other words, that's what they feed their young with. Oh. So if that's dry down in there, then that means you're not getting enough, um, you're not getting enough pollen in there for them to. Uh... And guys, do you see this right here? You can keep going. This is elastic, This so they don't fly in there. I'm just saying that because I just let one loose to go that was under my shirt. So Yeah, they'll climb a lot. Yeah, they're gonna say up. this whole video, they're gonna say, hey, why does this guy that does bees is smart have the bee suit on, but this other guy that doesn't know what he's doing doesn't. Well, well that... the reason for that is because I didn't know how these bees were gonna act, because every day is a new day. And uh the conditions are right, you know, there's not a lot of not cloudy. cloudy skies and it's nice and sunny. So these bees can get out of the hive and go to work. The bees are bipolar, so if it's really cloudy outside, then you don't want to mess with them too much. 
uh, if you don't have to. Uh, and he's just being precautious about it. I'm just doing it for you guys. And I said that a few times so you can drill it in your head. But he said they have their days. As soon as he said that, I had a comment this morning. I have my days too. But people think, uh, you know, I'm, I guess, uh, you know, I'm just a human being too, like you guys. I know you earthlings don't think I am, but people have their days. Today's a good day so far. sides that's all brewed and why is there little holes here and there they just didn't feel like doing those well usually what happens is that's an indication that your queen is getting weak oh and probably needs to be replaced um so when do you replace do they automatically do it themselves well they they will if at conditions are right and they have enough food and everything. there's the queen right there where right there see her That's the queen. Okay. Okay. I got some pictures for you guys. All right. And uh, I'm gonna keep my eye on her. And we'll put her right in here. And and put her right in the middle. And now we know that this hive is gonna be fine because they've got the original queen. They've got plenty of brood in there. They've got some honey. Normally I would scrape this all off. Yeah. But since they're gonna be eating on that for the next day or so, I'll just let it up there. And then these, you wanna stagger them or what are we doing well, this Well, when we get home, when you get home, you'll take those and you'll divide and you'll maybe go two frames okay. and then an empty frame. Okay. And then let them. But the very center one, thing. keep in the center. Is that the one that had the queen on it? Oh, uh, that doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter, because okay. she'll move. She'll, okay. She's gonna be looking for the next place to lay. Okay. Okay. So, she'll be looking for the next spot. So she'll move. Sounds like somebody I knew. <laughs> oh yeah, you hear that sound, guys? That sound is something you usually, when you're by yourself in the forest, you don't want to hear on a scary movie. Okay, well this is enough videotaping now, unless you want me to keep, ooh, there's a lot of honey on that's that. That's all honey. Yeah, that's heavy, I bet you that's heavy. Yeah, it is. Okay, and uh, <laughs> some people don't know, how much is one box maybe of honey, like if it's full, how much pounds of honey would you get, or quarts, if, or? If this box, since it's a deep, if it was full of honey, there would be 70 pounds, about 70 pounds oh, of honey. Oh, wow. Full. And this is what, it, when I say full, right, yeah. If you look at this from the top, you can see how much wider that is. Yeah. They've got that honey pulled yeah. out. Okay. All right. So if it's normal like this, then you won't have as much. But when they really fill it up, it'll be like this. So 70 pounds, what would that equal? How much is a gallon of honey weigh? Do you know? Uh, yeah, there's, uh, let's see. Like a quart. Yeah, a quart's two and a half. Two and a half, that's ten, okay, ten pounds so, for honey then. Ten pounds of honey okay. is a gallon. Ten pounds a gallon, so you're going to get almost seven gallons from this. Right. That's a lot of honey. That's that Honey's not, honey. it used to be, you used to sell them for like $20 a quart, now it's probably higher? Uh, yeah, I usually don't sell mine by the quart because Just I, don't, I don't always, a lot of times I haven't had the time to work these the last few years, so... Okay. I don't always uh, have as much honey as I should. This one should have had another box on it a long time ago, but uh, since I didn't, yeah, they're full. Then I won't I won't gain as much honey off of these this year because I have to leave some of this. The for feet, the yeah. So, uh, so what I usually do is I sell them by the uh, by the pound, and twelve liquid ounces of honey is one pound. So you would think it'd be 16, but that, that the unit of measure is not the same because yeah. it's liquid versus... Yeah, milk uh, and water's weight. even different because milk's right. a little bit thicker. I know yeah. I know water's eight pounds, milk's like eight and a half. Yeah. So this one, you can kind of see on this. Oh yeah, look at that. This whole top part here is honey. The bottom part is brood. So if you look at that, they call that a football shape down there at the bottom. Okay. 
Okay, well guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and st stop this camera here. Um, I'm going to jinx myself. I did not get stung yet, um, but I'm going to get out of here and uh, probably do the fence. And I'll probably talk to you after the fence, maybe just give you shots and stuff. What are we doing here and there? But I can't keep doing this camera all day because we got to get some work done. Uh, so I apologize about that. But hey, that's life. Got to got to keep going. So let me help him uh, finish this up and stop being looking ignorant with the camera in my hand, just talking. And uh, I will talk to you in a little bit. Okay, it's time to do the corner post because if you don't do this uh, when you try to stretch it, then, uh, then the fence post is going to bend. So you need that for uh, to be sturdy. Okay, folks, we got this metal bracket on here um, so we can pull it so it doesn't pull the fence too bad. Um, but we're going to stretch it out. He's going to get the skid steer. Uh, we got the ratchet straps there. What do you really call these? What's the technical name? Oh, uh, well, I, I don't know. They're cable come alongs, is what they are. Cable come alongs. Grow up, people, whatever you're thinking. But this. Uh, this bracket here, they, they snap into here and try to pull them evenly. Um, we're gonna stretch this fence tight because right here, it's not too tight, that's what I said. Um, but we're gonna stretch this and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna be proper. Uh, I'm gonna put this down and once he starts pulling, I'll, I'll keep this camera just on the tripod so you can see it and take it from there. Okay, we got some of the fence done. Um, it is about 3.30 now. He has to leave to go get uh, cleaned up to go do some stuff uh, for himself. But I'm gonna get cleaned up at the Mascuta house where I've been staying and then head on out about five. I'm, I'm pack the bees in the car and everything, get out about five, stop by my mom's, and then head on home to, uh, to Mississippi. So, um, had a real eventful uh, time this whole trip, uh, but I'll, I'll probably, get in the car and talk to you a little bit more in detail without me having to rush while I'm driving. So let me get all cleaned up and, um, and then I can get back to you guys, okay? Uh, it's just uh, doing these vlogs and trying to work out in the hot sun, 100 degrees, and stand here and hold a camera. Um, I try not to be uh, too heat exhausted by standing out here way too long and then I got my buddy Mike out here waiting on me. So I will see you guys uh, probably when I get in the car on the way back to uh, Mississippi. Go post stop recording. Hey, all packed up and ready to go. I had a little uh, moment here. I went to pick the bee box up and there was a little opening in the front that they was getting by. So uh, I thought that was bees from the backyard just being curious about these bees. But there was a passageway um, in the back of this wooden uh, spot where the mesh was. And I did block it off a little bit right here. I'm not sure if you can see it good. I did block it off a little bit more with some mesh. I put a wet paper towel um, in there, so it's gonna take them a little time to get uh, through that. And I put the metal mesh um, ahead of that. So, looks like they're still in there and there's no bees in here for right now. Um, I heard a myth a long time ago, if you wear yellow, bees sting you more. So look what shirt, yes, I've had on 
I don't believe in myths. So uh, superstitions, I mean, superstitions. Uh, I don't believe in superstitions much, so there you go. Um, I'm going to head on out. I got another two and a half, three hour drive to my mom's since this is further into Illinois. Um, so I got about a three hour drive. I'm going to be at my mom's and then I'm heading home. But I'll probably talk to you while I'm driving on the road a little bit. Uh, but I wanted just to uh, check in with you. Uh, and then when I get settled in on the road, I'll put this GoPro on the dash and talk to you a little bit more, okay? So let me head up out of here. GoPro, stop recording. Hey, I'm about to get gas. I did have, not that kind of gas, but uh, I did have to go live here. Shoot, trap, trap, trap. I did have to shoot the video um, right now while I'm driving, which is road noise, and I'm not really a big fan of, of the background noise and road noise and stuff, but it's about to get dark, and I um, wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I have another 20 miles to go until I get gas because I'm not getting gas in Illinois because they price gouge you. But, uh, I'm gonna get to Missouri where gas is 30 to 40 cents cheaper. Um, and that's about the same price it is in Mississippi where we stay. So um, I'm gonna fill up with gas, go to my mom's, and then head home. So uh, this this has been a, a roller coaster of a trip for me, um, emotionally, physically. Um, we did get the celebration of life taken care of on Saturday and Sunday. I um, had a great turnout uh, at the towards the end of the day on both days. I uh, really had a good time talking to everybody and thanking them for being a part of Ariana's life. Um, but with that said, uh, I'm still going to continue and do a memorial for Ariana uh, near the fall time, start doing the hardscape, like the uh, landscaping bricks and stuff. I'm gonna start doing that in the fall. Uh, so I will continue to do stuff uh, in memory of Ariana. Um, I always say uh, to Ariana, she was my favorite daughter and she would smile and say, um, you know, I'm your only daughter. And that was our little joke, you know, I would, you know, say that. that said guys I'm going to get out of here um, thank you very much for being a sports team members I really appreciate it um, until the next vlog go post stop recording hey thanks for watching the video again if you haven't visited my website yet um, the, the address is www.doggarbagedisposalstore.com you can navigate through the top all these links right here um, there is actually a question and comment form if you have any questions or comments uh, fill that out and it'll go straight to my email at the very bottom there is a free newsletter just sign up for right here um, and you will get a weekly newsletter so uh if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting on? Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit see all so you get all the notifications and don't miss the videos. Please comment. I like to um, listen to your comments uh, and respond to you. So I do like to interact with you guys. Uh, please share the video with your friends, family, even your boss. And have a great day. Let's meet other plans.